Well, hello there, I'm Sandy Allnock, and today I'm going to make some rainbow dinosaurs who are the cutest thing ever. There are some darling little dinosaurs to add to our dinosaur collections from MFT this month and these two were so sweet and I thought it'd be fun to color them as a little couple in love but that they would be rainbow dinosaurs. I was originally thinking of putting rainbows behind them in a scene and I thought wait a minute I haven't made the actual animals rainbows and we don't technically know what color dinosaurs ever were. I mean the science fiction books and stuff in the movies will tell us that they're green or greenish blue or brown or gray but why not rainbow i mean they could have been rainbow we have no idea what color they were i'm sure there's probably some science person who will try to defeat me in my belief that they might be rainbow dinosaurs but there you go that's what mine are going to be today I've stamped them onto some Stonehenge drawing paper because I'm using my luminance pencils and Stonehenge plus luminance means your hand does not get very tired. I'm not pressing very hard at all to get this much pigment out of my pencils, which is kind of nice. If you've ever struggled with that, then you are probably using a pressure of like a four or a five. And when you do that for an extended period of time, that becomes difficult. And if you're wondering what a pressure of a four or five is, there's a little scale that I have people go through in the color pencil jumpstart class to see what it feels like to use really light pressure versus really heavy pressure. And most people decide after doing those exercises that they believe me when I say do light layers and just build up layers on top of each other because the lighter pressure hurts your hand less. And as I was doing this part of the coloring, my hand was not hurting at all, which was really nice. And especially if you're somebody who's getting to have, uh, shall we say, more experienced hands that have been on this earth coloring things a lot longer, then you might have more trouble than others with pain in your hands. And we don't want pain in our hands. We want everything to be comfortable and fun as we're doing it. So it's helpful to be able to build color up little by little in layers. I didn't do a whole lot of layering in this because I just wanted to get my little rainbow dinosaurs done. I probably could have done a little bit more to get more of the color blended together, but I wanted to try, I haven't used in a while, the luminance uh, pencil that is a blender pencil. So I decided to see if I could let the pencil blender do the work for me instead of trying to do it with a lot of layering, like over coloring one color with another to get them to blend better. But with any colored pencil work, if you do more of your blending as you're applying the pencil first, then do your blending with whatever tool you're blending with, blending stumps or blending pencils or blender pens, you're going to have better success in your blending if you've already got the colors pretty smooth and pretty well blended as you're putting the applying the color in the first place you just it's going to be easier to use those other tools if that makes sense the little palm tree here i didn't stamp the top of the palm tree that's in the stamp set because it looked a little more like a flower but notice that I just made an arc for each one and then made little squares coming off of the arc and that turns it into a palm tree. It's kind of a simple way to draw your own palm trees. The sentiment is on a straight line, but I made it a little arc because I wanted to create a little vignette of love for my guard and that kind of created that, but I needed that little palm tree to fill in that empty gap because otherwise it was gonna be a weird empty space. This is the Luminance Blender Pencil, and so you can see how smooth it will get things and how nicely it enriches the color. The one problem with this is that you do have to use a heavier pressure with it. So my hand did start getting tired as I was doing this. I was like, okay, that's why I don't use this very much. I use a little less pressure with a blender, uh, blending stump than I do with this. So it does a really good job. It's it's like using a pencil that doesn't have any color in it. 
basically. But in order to get the color to enrich like this, you really do need to use some decent pressure when you're applying it. So I was kind of zooming around quickly so I could get on to the ground that I wanted to color. So I started with yellow at the top and then wanted to work my way down into green. And I wanted to try something else too that actually worked. So that was a nice, nice thing to see. So I blended it from yellow into green and then I took the darker green and I wanted to make some shadows coming off of their feet. And so I'm picturing the light being behind them and the shadows coming forward toward the viewer. And uh, you may be hearing a cat in the background. If you do, I apologize. Uh, little Punchinello is just full of himself while I'm trying to do my voiceovers. But at least it's not the dogs this time. But the dogs listen to me if I tell them to hush because I'm working. The cats, they don't care. So there you go. So I'm trying to create a little of these, these shadows underneath here so that there's that, that look of the light coming from the back. And then I extended the color down across the, the bottom so I could have color going all the way down to the bottom of the card. And one of the things that I do know from that Color Pencil Jumpstart class is that that color pencil will actually blend somewhat with a cotton ball. So I took a cotton ball and I didn't use, for those who were in the class, I didn't use the tea strainer. I just started spreading the color that's already on the paper and it worked pretty well. And then I'm just going in now and firming up some of those lines to increase the contrast because some of that got lost when I started spreading it. But it's the same idea as when you accidentally smoosh your, your paper or something and you've moved the color with your finger. I guess it's the same idea because the pigment is still sitting on the surface of the paper and you can soften out that edge that I have that you can see here at the bottom. And since I had all these beautiful rainbow colors going on in my little rainbow dinosaurs, I put a rainbow of little scraps of paper. I, I have all these, this shelf full of rainbow, all dif different colors of paper card stocks and added lots and lots of layers to match on the, uh, the coloring of the card. And I thought I came out really cute. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, click the like button. Make sure you go to the blog once in a while to see cards that you have missed because they're no longer all on YouTube. There's stuff on my blog that you may want to see. And there's also a video over on the MFT channel from me today. So go see that as well. Talk to you guys later.